slave. And uh, you are man in focus. Uh, you know, people want to understand that how you are uh, balancing the ecology and development. You are energy secretary of uh, government of Uttarakhand. Uh, you know, the entire country's focus is on Uttarakhand, that how Uttarakhand deals with their hydro projects. So I'm straight away coming to the business. Uh, we want to understand that, uh, you know, what is the game plan like? Uh, we understand that you have uh, demarcated uh, the fragility of the hills, uh, have started the reorientation, how you want to proceed with the hydro projects. I wanted to hear it from you, uh, that how uh, you are planning to save the Ganges, save these mountains, and uh, save uh, you know, many of these projects uh, which may have caused uh, the damage. Uh, sir, mic is yours. Uh, when Uttarakhand was created, hydropower was considered as uh, one of the strengths of Uttarakhand. So there were questions about the state's viability and uh, three uh, thrust sectors were identified, tourism, horticulture and hydropower. Uh, and we were supposed to become a Urja Pradesh supplying power not just to our state but to the rest of the country as well. Uh, but subsequently we hit a lot of roadblocks. We have an estimated potential of 25,000 megawatts in the state. Uh, but we are able to harness, uh, even if we include the projects in pipeline or under construction, then also we will be reaching 15,000 megawatts. So there is a 10,000 megawatts which is still not tapped. So now there are multiple reasons for that and the principal reason is uh, uh, there has been opposition. Opposition by environmentalists as well as opposition by people who believe that uh, there should be uninterrupted uh, uh, river flow in the river Ganges. So, uh, as a result of it, uh, Bhagirathi Valley, uh, because there is a uh, National Ganga River Basin Authority which has uh, ruled out uh, Bhagirathi Valley projects altogether. So, uh, all the projects in Bhagirathi Valley are dropped finally now. And now, with respect to Alaknanda, there has been a total of 44 power projects out of which uh, 24 has been ruled out and the remaining 20, 10 have got all clearances but uh, they are still held up uh, in the Ministry of Water Resources. And remaining 10 projects, there has been a Supreme Court appointed uh, uh, committee which has cleared the proposal. So we have been requesting both the Government of India as well as uh, the Honorable Supreme Court to consider sanctioning these 10 projects at least. Uh, simultaneously what we are doing is uh, we are focusing on the other rivers like Yamuna, Tones, Dauri Ganga, Gaur Gauri Ganga and Dauli Ganga. So, uh, we will be focusing on these rivers, also we will focus more on the small hydropower projects, less than 25 megawatt, uh, where there will be less of issues uh, and the state is also coming out with a pump storage power plant policy, which uh, maybe in the next month uh, will be cleared by the cabinet, state cabinet. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we have also come out with a solar policy. Uh, Sir, I'll come to your other yeah. projects in a bit, you know, because we wanted to understand more of the uh, uh, ecological side. Uh, you know, you are talking about the future projects, right, those 24 projects. But the existing projects, you know, they are also, uh, you know, facing the threat. We have already seen in last three, four years as some projects, you know, they have caused the damage. Uh, Joshimut project, you know, that has, uh, you know, almost threatened the entire Joshimut bed. Uh, you know, there is now studies which are happening on the cracks and the other things. Then there are uh, projects where boulders have reached and they have damaged uh, uh, the projects. And people are talking, people means uh, the environment list, that the environment uh, impact studies have not been conducted. Not only by the private players, but also by the NHPC and NTPC of this world. How are you dealing with those projects which are already there and probably threatening the hill terrain? How are you dealing with it? Okay, with respect to Joshi Mat, you know, the NTPC has got the Tapovan Vishnu Ghat power project and this project had been blamed by people for the uh, Joshi Mat landslides. Uh, but post the incident, there has been n number of expert agencies engaged by the National Disaster Management Authority and they have all submitted uh, their reports and then reports were compiled and then NDMA has submitted a uh, final report to the state government. Uh, both the individual reports by expert organizations as well as the final report compiled by NDMA do not blame the power project for these things. Uh, the final conclusion is the entire Joshi Mutt uh, is on top of a 
um, a previous avalanche and because of that there is a lot of underground water stored uh, between the rocks and because the water started leaking the uh, the cracks and the slides have happened so this is the final conclusion so one more thing i wanted to tell you know we always think that uh, uh, dams only create problems i can quote an incident where dams actually saved uh, as from a disaster potential disaster so i was the district magistrate of haridwar in 2010 so i received a call that bagirathi valley and alaknanda valley both have received unprecedented rainfall and there is going to be a huge flood and the the the, the total uh, water level will be uh, much higher than the uh, danger mark and it will be a 100 year maximum okay so in alaknanda we did not have any possibility but in bagirathi we had terry dam so immediately i contacted the officials of the thdc as well as the terry district administration and requested them to hold water in the bagirathi uh, in terry dam uh, up to the level in which it is it was possible uh, allow the alaknanda water to flow first and then once it crosses then release the bagirathi water so we were able to avoid a very uh, big potential disaster in haridwar and rishikesh because of the terry dam sir you know there is a saying in english that devil lies in the details you know problem is not with the dams problem is with the impact the environment impact studies you know like joshimat thing which you are talking about you know people haven't studied that whether joshimat is sitting on a avalanche uh, uh, you know remains or you know this is a old uh, hill but still you know they they kept on doing the drillings and kept on uh, uh, digging the tunnels you know these type of things threaten uh, you know consciousness that uh, probably the other hydro projects they may also cause uh, a similar threat so probably more investments need to be made in understanding the hills better probably the investments need to be made in uh, doing these studies in a better way the problem is not with the dams the problem is that these studies are not been done in time so maybe for your uh, future projects and uh, to study the existing project you may need to make these investments see environment impact study is the mandate of uh, the ministry of environment and forest and uh, before sanctioning every project they do it meticulously and even post sanction of the project uh, these studies keep on continuing and in case you know if if some betterment is needed then uh, the government of india will take note of it and then come out with suitable answer oh, to it sir if we move ahead of uh, hydro projects you know uh, the new renewable is the new thing in the country uh, uttarakhand is blessed with the less than 25 degrees of temperature and clean air which is a prerequisite for a high uh, plf uh, in the solar projects how are you dealing with the uh, this uh, uh, situation how how much impact you want to make through the solar and uh, what is the road map like see with uh, solar power we have some limitations because solar power is largely land intensive and land is a scarce resource in uttarakhand and we will we will not be able to come out with very large utility scale solar projects like what rajasthan is doing or gujarat is doing or some of the southern states are doing uh, so we decided to focus more on the distributed solar and of course wherever it was possible uh, you know to focus on the utility scale solar so the state has come out with a solar policy where we have kept a modest target of reaching 2000 megawatt through solar power uh, within a span of 3 years so with this target uh, we have started moving and uh, distributed solar and especially the rooftop solar uh, we are giving quite a lot of incentives so hopefully uh, that will result in uh, some generation from that end. sir if we look at your budget papers and data uh, you know uh, there is a projection of uh, growth of uh, the gdp by 10 percent every year chgr wise uh, that automatically means that you require more electricity, especially when you have uh, roughly 90% of uh, your uh, GDP contribution coming either from the services sector or from uh, manufacturing sector. So that means your energy requirement will be increasing by the same proportion, if I'm not wrong. So that requires uh, your more investments in the base load, plus uh, you know there will be a peaking load. Uh, right now, Heidel is almost taken care of because of the environmental uh, uh, problems. And um, thermal investments are also very scarce. How are you planning in next 10 years that uh, 
Uttarakhand is not short of electricity and it's not dependent on you know the national grid because we all understand that national grid is very vulnerable so how are you planning uh, the, that trajectory so like i told uh, you know um, one is to harness the potential within the state which we will be doing both in hydro as well as solar then we will also uh, look into the possibility of establishing power plants in other states like uh, we are looking for po establishing thermal power plants in uh, states like Odisha or uh, uh, Chhattisgarh or Jharkhand uh, nearer to the coal mines and also we are looking at uh, establishing solar power projects with storage in states like Rajasthan, Gujarat where plenty of land is available at reasonable price. But do you think that these investments are good enough with the 10 years uh, gestation period? Because uh, right now I think your requirement is something around uh, 2000 uh, megawatts uh, on, a, on a very daily basis. Uh, and your own capacity is roughly around 700, 800, including all the resources. And you are still dependent on the grid. And uh, these investments which you are talking about would be, you know, very minor ones not the, the, of the great uh, ultra mega, uh, uh, ultra mega uh, power plant scales. So how are you, uh, you know, envisaging that after 10 years, where would the, you know, fulcrum will be? So how are you dealing with that situation? If 10% growth rate you are envisaging, you're requiring 10% more electricity every year. So are you, are you planning to stay dependent on the grid or you want to be self-sufficient? Uh -huh. Uh, the first, uh, you know, step will be to harness all the potential that is possible within the state. That will include uh, uh, those hydropower projects where there is no ban uh, either from the court or from government of India. Then the second one is to harness the small and medium, uh, small, small but, size. But these will be marginal, right? These will not be the earth-shattering one, which will, you know, change the whole landscape. These no, will be marginal see, ones. See, 25 megawatt. Uh, less 25 megawatt and less, uh, the small hydropower plants. If you total the potential, then it comes to around 2,000 megawatts. So it's not a small number, and we are focusing on that. And pump storage plant, we can harness another 1,000 to 2,000 megawatts. Uh, then uh, in solar, we are targeting 2,000 megawatts in the span of uh, three years. So this is the total uh, generation capacity available within the state. And then we will go for outside the state also. See, your state is in a very, uh, you know, terrain-wise, it's a very uh, complex state. In winters, you will not get uh, neither solar or nor, uh, uh, you know, hydel. So, you know, you still would require a thermal-based capacities, right? Um, and in times to come, there will be more tourism projects in the hills. There will be more infrastructure in the hills. How are you taking, you know, these type of distributions and this type of uh, projects? So help us in understanding that. To satisfy the base load, we need thermal. We understand that requirement. And we already have two gas-based power plants operating in the uh, district of Udham Singh Nagar. Of course, we have some temporary uh, disruption because of uh, the uh, global uh, gas prices at a very high level. So uh, during the summer season, we operated uh, the gas plants uh, because at that time, the market price was higher than that. And then now, uh, today, the market price is much lower, so we are not operating them. Uh, in the winter, we will again operate them. Uh, there is another gas-based power plant which is uh, in the pipeline. Along with that, we will also go for coal-based power plants in some other state. So this is our overall strategy. So, you know, the big agenda of uh, present NDA government in the center is that they want to provide 24 to 7 electricity to every household. And I was checking the data that, you know, Uttarakhand is still not being able to provide 24 is to 7 uh, electricity supply. I'm not saying excess, but supplies. So is it more because, you know, uh, you have to source the expensive electricity from outside or, you know, you're augmenting your infrastructure? What, why, you know, that 24 is to 7 supply is not happening? Uh, I won't say we, are, uh, we have achieved 24 by 7 power supply, but we are very close to that, you know, if you look at the roastering uh, details of other states and compare it with Uttarakhand, you know, we have got very less uh, roastering, and uh, even if we compare it with our neighbors, Uttar Pradesh, so we are at a much better position right now. But are you doing something to improve it? Uh, because your infrastructure also need to be augmented, right? So yeah. You're getting funds from the center? 
Yeah, so center is coming out with a distribution sector program called RDSS, the revamped distribution supply systems. So the state has also signed for RDSS program. And in the RDSS program, there are reform agenda also like, you know, uh, with respect to billing efficiency, with respect to ACC, ARR uh, difference, and then uh, with respect to the collection efficiency. So everything needs to be improved. So there are set parameters by Government of India for each DISCOM. So we have signed that and, uh, you know, uh, the, our project has already been sanctioned. We are also uh, in the process of procuring the smart meters where uh, the billing efficiency will uh, sufficiently improve. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your insightful uh, conversation. The monitor here is telling me that our time is up and you have given us, you know, a really good deep dive into uh, your state's uh, energy scenario. And I'm really thankful and uh, best of luck for your future. Sai. Associate Publisher, India Today. I want to invite you to our guest. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so आप सभी समझ गए होंगे कि अगला सेशन हमारा आ, कुछ बड़ा होने वाला है ढेर सारे मेहमान यहाँ पर होंगे और आ, क्योंकि उत्तराखंड न सिर्फ हम देशवासी बल्कि पूरी दुनिया से लोग उत्तराखंड घूमने आते हैं बहुत बड़ा टूरिस्ट हब है और इस सेशन को मॉडरेट करने के लिए सत्र 